My name is Karthik Krishnan. I am the founder and CEO of Concentric AI, uh, a data security company. At Concentric, we help enterprises discover, monitor, and protect their data across their enterprise environment without rules, regular expressions, policies, across structured, unstructured, and cloud data repositories. Today, I'd like to present to you Concentric Semantic Intelligence, which can help you with your zero trust data security needs. Today, I would like to showcase uh, the capabilities of the Concentric Semantic Intelligence solution. Uh, Concentric Semantic Intelligence does uh, three things for customers. Uh, it fully automates uh, the discovery process, um, helping you understand all of your mission critical data from financial information to intellectual property to business confidential information to PII, PCI, PHI within your data with context. It also helps you identify uh, where there may be risk against that data from inappropriate permissioning, wrong entitlements, uh, risky sharing, unauthorized access, um, and so on. Uh, and the last part of what the solution does is um, it helps you remediate those issues and prevent data loss. Uh, it does all of this uh, in an automated fashion without uh, customers having to do any right, um, any uh, upfront rules, regular expressions, policies, or requiring a priori understanding of what risk means to them or what uh, they need to look for from a sensitive information identification standpoint. It's also completely agentless. It can stand up uh, within 10 minutes and demonstrate value within your, with your data sets uh, within a few days. So I'd like to go ahead and um, show you what uh, the product is capable of doing within your own environment. Uh, the first part of what I talked about was the data discovery process. Concentric semantic intelligence does something pretty unique um, in that it uses deep learning as a form of NLP to help you contextually understand your data. It goes beyond um, regexes and patterns to developing a semantic understanding of the data uh, to give you a thematic view into your information um, where if you were to point us at a bunch of your repositories, uh, we'll come back and give you a category-oriented representation of your data, everything from legal, HR, uh, finance, insurance, and so on, uh, to if you were to click within finance, um, also be able to give you um, subcategories of data, for example, you know, term sheets or uh, credit card letters or income statements um, and so on. This is all done um, across uh, this data discovery happens across your entire environment, across unstructured repositories, structured repositories, um, also email uh, messaging uh, communications applications. Uh, and you can also get views into if there is PII, PCI information um, within this data. We're also providing that um, juxtaposed with context. For example, uh, PII data in a resume, uh, may have different context relative to, say, PII data sitting within a wire transfer document. Once we discover this data, um, a lot of our customers have used this uh, to drive, for example, data classification programs where uh, you can go ahead and uh, thematically identify uh, categories of data, for example, credit card authorization statements. Um, and you can say, go ahead and classify um, all of this data as uh, being confidential. Um, and uh, we then integrate with native classification schema, everything from uh, Microsoft Information Protection to Google to Box uh, to um, other uh, third-party classification schemas to natively apply uh, the metadata where we're able to apply the confidential metadata tag um, against uh, this particular data itself. So uh, there are customers, you know, we have uh, credit unions and hedge funds today who have successfully deployed data classification to tag uh, mission critical sensitive data um, and, and label it accordingly uh, without having to do a lot of rule writing up front, without having to rely uh, on your end users to have to go in um, and self-identify the data and so on. So this is the first substrate of what the system does for you, which is helping automate the discovery 
uh, with context uh, without customers having to do any work up front. Uh, the deep learning and the NLP um, allows you to um, understand this data and categorize it with extremely high accuracy uh, because you're going beyond um, regexes and patterns which often lack the context necessary to understand true meaning to actually developing a semantic understanding of the data and giving you a pretty highly accurate view into where all of your uh, mission critical data might be. Once we discover the data, we then uh, do something that's also fairly unique, uh, which is we compare semantically similar data for their properties like entitlements, uh, sharing properties, who's accessing it, um, location, and so on, to also give you a risk-oriented view of that information uh, developed autonomously, where, for example, we can tell you uh, sensitive data that may have been shared outside the company in a manner that looks inappropriate. That's what the risky sharing outside the company uh, widget represents. Um, or for example, at a tech company where we're helping them identify intellectual property, either design documents, uh, source code, etc., that employees have shared with their own personal email. Uh, it's an insider risk use case. Uh, it's something that um, is against the corporate uh, use policy for that particular customer. But we, instead of just a blanket identifying all use cases where personal sharing is happening with email, we're surgically able to apply it uh, to the specific data sets that they actually care about, which in this case happens to be uh, their intellectual property. Um, or for example, if you have classification programs in place, you're using end users to self-identify data, uh, we can compare semantically and thematically similar data for uh, what pro labels have been applied uh, to also be able to give you a view into uh, data that may have been inappropriately classified. For example, uh, the data that um, should probably have been classified confidential, but uh, somebody has erroneously marked it as uh, public, in which case now sensitive data may end up in the wrong hands. So uh, we can then uh, not only detect that, but uh, we can give you a, a view into exactly what the data is uh, that may have this particular property. In this case, I double clicked on the risky sharing um, risk widget uh, to give you a view into some of those documents. Um, and uh, one of those happens to be uh, a share agreement. Um, and uh, upon investigation, let's say that you, know, you, you essentially don't like what you see in terms of who might have access. You can actually go in and um, surgically apply policy where you can go ahead um, and define a permission where you can say, uh, make sure that um, documents of this particular type, for example, uh, finance documents or um, legal documents that potentially may have a certain property, like may have certain PII um, in it, um, you want to make sure that regardless of where it may be within your environment, you want to make sure that um, either all external users don't have access to it or um, only certain classes of, of users and groups have actually access to it. And it could be a permit policy, it could be a deny policy. Uh, and if you were to go ahead and create this particular policy, we will go ahead and continuously monitor your environment to make sure that data of this particular type uh, can only be shared with the right sets of people. So it allows you to not just find risk, uh, but also go ahead and investigate uh, to be able to remediate um, issues that you might see. Uh, another very unique uh, thing about what we do is, let's say you want to find uh, credit card letters and uh, you're worried about uh, information with PII in them. One of the nice things that the system gives you is a unified view into where all of this data may be across your environment, um, across your on-premises data repositories. In this case, you know, Fremont happens to be a local file system, uh, could be on um, uh, your cloud SharePoint, uh, could also be with through email. Uh, could be, for example, Exchange. And uh, we give you concentric semantic intelligence remains the only solution that actually um, allows you to get uh, views around um, access and risk, uh, not just across structured and unstructured, but also um, environments like uh, email and messaging applications.
And uh, in this case, if you um, look, the, the, the clip sign tells you that this is uh, a data that may have been uh, a credit card letter that was actually exchanged over email. And so if you were to click on that, uh, you can get a view into who the users are that this information was shared with um, and um, all the corresponding and you know, thematically similar data. Um, and um, you now get a view into how this information might actually have proliferated across your environment, uh, not just at the repository level, but also across um, in motion repositories, in motion sources like uh, email as an example. And um, on any one of these risk widgets, let's say we're helping you um, identify um, intellectual property that employees have shared with their own personal email. Um, if you were to click on this, um, you can get a view into the specific um, subcategories within which we saw the information, but also you can get um, information around the um, specific uh, document or, or data type itself. For example, you know, here's an option grant document that an employee shared with their own personal email. Um, and it, this gives you a data 360 view, it tells you everything about uh, the document itself in this case, whether it was a legal document, uh, stock agreement, whether it contained PII. Um, and also it tells you all the internal, external users that uh, this information was actually is accessible by, um, as well as um, you know who it's uh, who it's been um, shared with. You know who the users are that potentially shared this with their own personal email, as an example. Uh, and if there is any PII um, or PCI or address type information that is within that document, uh, that's also presented to you with with this sort of a 360 degree view. The other thing that uh, the system also allows you to do is um, it basically allows you to get activity level analytics. So it doesn't just tell you um, context around the data, but it also can tell you, for example, if you click on a user, uh, you can get what he or she might have done over a prior uh, period that um, you can flexibly define. For example, you can tell in this case, uh, this particular user, uh, you can tell what he or she viewed, uh, what they uploaded, um, what they downloaded, visited, etc., modified, etc. But not just at a raw list, uh, but also at a thematic level. You know how many of this were sales data, HR data, legal data, and so on. Uh, this is something that a lot of our enterprises have found very useful uh, for employee offboarding use cases. Let's say an employee is leaving the company. Um, often there end up being investigations around what, what that said employee might have done in the prior 30, 60 days, uh, but not just a, a composite list of activity, but around data sets that you may care about. Um, did they take um, some intellectual property with them? Did they take some sensitive financial data with them? And uh, by having a pretty rich understanding of the data itself, the system is able to uh, give you a window into exactly what the that particular employee might have done um, at a category, subcategory level. So you can actually drill down upon the specific sets of data that you really, really care about um, and get a view into what uh, they might have done uh, to support your um, data incident investigation use cases. The overarching theme here is the system works uh, completely in an autonomous fashion. So uh, the system require, it requires us uh, 10 minutes uh, to deploy and stand up, um, either for a proof of value or for an actual production deployment. Uh, it connects back into your repositories uh, in an agentless manner through APIs. Uh, within a few days, uh, we can actually uh, scan and give you a pretty representative view into your data so you can actually see uh, the AI, the deep learning work within your environment uh, to give you a view that looks exactly like this. In fact, this view was created without um, any upfront work at all. So the system is able to discover your data. It's able to give you a risk-oriented dashboard um, supporting your data incident investigations. Um, so you can actually then uh, go ahead and remediate uh, specific things um, that you care about. The solution also has a policy exchange marketplace, where as customers are defining risk widgets um, around um, 
risk that applies to them at various dimensions. Could be about sharing, could be about entitlements, could be about permissions, could be about location. Um, the on a, on a publish and subscribe model, uh, they can actually consume what risk widgets are getting defined by other customers, um, where uh, it gets represented in, a, in an anonymous fashion, where uh, if they choose to publish, they can actually choose to subscribe as well. So where, for example, uh, if you were a financial services uh, security, ex uh, security exec, uh, you could, um, in an anonymous fashion, uh, get views and insights into what other financial security professionals are doing um, around defining risk within their own environment. Uh, so you can actually take a lot of those widgets, um, like you're seeing here, could be uh, risk widgets, uh, could be policy widgets, uh, could be you know all the active widgets. You can actually go ahead and uh, add them to your dashboard to where if you are concerned about you know, where you want to start, you can use this as a springboard uh, to define specific um, risk widgets on, on dimensions of policy that you care about uh, and get bootstrapped or, or get sort of kickstarted um, that way. Hopefully uh, that gives you a view into what uh, concentric uh, semantic intelligence can do for you. Uh, please contact us uh, if uh, you need more information, uh, www.concentric.ai. You know, please go ahead and book a demo uh, or contact sales at concentric.ai for more information. And uh, we'd be happy to come in, talk to you, learn about your specific data security needs and uh, see if we can be of help. Uh, thank you very much.